Let's all welcome D.L. Lang. Thank you. The town in which I came of age still imprints upon this very page. Her name translates to soul, and upon mine she oft doth pull. Named after an idol itself, her history sits upon my shelf. Enid is dubbed appropriately, from her railroads to her prairie. The city of my youth has changed, with many buildings rearranged. Childhood haunts have faded into the past, alongside the schoolmates who have passed. No matter the years that I am gone, upon her stories I am often drawn. Hometown for me, she may always be, but I can only visit her in my memory. Only like one person clap. Thank you for clapping. Yes, This poem is called Fountain. Life drips from the fountain of youth, streaming from a distant future, the well of a never-ending past. Peaceful. Glistening drops hurry to their end. Continuous life streams pass. Simultaneous origins of origin. Soft ripples of pain and pleasure spread beyond memory. Recycled dreams and history soon to be forgotten. But to those who stop and query, who receive a peace in rhythm seldom discovered today. I wrote this poem after wandering around uh, North Beach in San Francisco with a friend of mine. It's called North Beaching It. Do not enter the sanctuary, read the sign. No joke, this ornate Catholic sanctuary was not for the common folk. The lady at the cafe assured us that magic is real. She'd been researching hidden traditions over her meal. An Afghani rug salesman gave us candy treats and a warm greeting as we roamed the streets. We ascended the stairs of Vesuvio, lost ourselves in conversation, and watched a street fiddler from on high. On the bar it read, "'Twas a woman who drove me to drink, and I never had the decency to write her and thank her." <laughs> in the window of the bookstore was an ironic sign of warning, "'Books will yield dangerous thoughts, and firemen will kindly dispose of the whole lot." The possibilities were a volcano of infinity, as we walked in the footsteps of artists and beatniks, drinking in the atmosphere of angels and renewing our spirits for the journey ahead. I walked in a gaggle of commuters to my car in Selma, witnessed the downtrodden sleeping in unfortunate comas on sidewalks, bus stops, and tents, and felt grateful for the bed that awaited me. Earlier, I parted with a few lousy cents to a bearded gentleman sitting cross-legged on the street. But even my good deeds aren't enough, you see. Man and God must unite so all can be equal and free. <laughs> this next one is called The Valley of the Moon. Somewhere deep inside the valley of the moon, where the mountains kiss the stars goodnight, lies the road to peace. This road spirals around the earth, once paved in kindness by loving hands, a network of possibilities guided guiding the feet of dreamers who step gently across majestic lands. Towering art and free flowing flowers dot the winding way to sun-soaked sands and forgotten forests, where trees stretch high and leaves wave free at rainbowed skies. Music wafts throughout the air, echoing for miles around in every genre and every joyful sound flowing from free souls who wander there, deep inside the valley of the moon. Passers-by flash peace signs and motorists who pause in chapels searching for wholeness, behind doors adorned by holy greetings of welcome, saying, we must love the world to peace. And as friends walk hand in hand down the road from distant lands, their broken-hearted days are at an end, as love is magic imbued with hope. To find this road, 
one must but look within towards the safety of the beating heart, for it knows that slow and steady goes the whisperings of a new start. Deep inside a midnight gaze, between lovers' eyes on mundane days, hides the map that shows the way, the warm embrace of a friendly face will transport you right away, for you could never arrive too soon deep inside the valley of the moon. I briefly lived in Marin, and I wrote this poem for the county fair, and it ended up uh, winning a prize there. It's called Marin Is. Marin is the stuff of childhood art. Green hills, blue skies, cotton candy clouds, little red farmhouses, happy black and white cows. It is the wilderness, the ocean crashing salty, seagulls, seals, pelicans, a breath of mountain air, palm trees, pines, redwoods, the inner peace you may find out there. Marin is the stuff of dreamers, hippies, glorious hippies, artists, folkies, poets, lefties, zen, yoga, organic foodie, perfectionism. Startups and mom and pops, lovely families in every direction. But Marin is traffic jams, business suits, coffee, bikers dodging, hikers escaping, the Prius tailgating me, the second homeless man on the street that I am no better than he. Marin is hanging on by a thread woven with the stacks of bus passes, unemployment stubs, resumes and applications, making up the book of an unrealized life. Marin is a taste of the good life as the bottle runs dry and you know not where the next drop shall come from. Marin was home until it wasn't, but part of me never left. This is a poem about my house in the whale. It's called Home Ghosts. Your mail still arrives, splayed about on the garage floor, as if you never truly closed the door. I mark them with a blood-red ink stamp for their return journey, and occasionally the post office mistakenly returns them to me. Occasionally, a foreign object will appear, a children's book, a Catholic candle or three, a photograph, a box of gemstones, a glass art panel. The glass makes me think that I'm not the first artist to live here. And perhaps the stained glass window in my living room sanctuary was created right here. The most haunting thing is the painting. Her ghostly face stares at me with dead eyes from a monotone brown smeared spirally piece. It's jarring my inner peace, but I know not what to do with it. This house had 35 years of history prior to us. This house has existed for five more than me. It's from the 1970s, a condo in a neighborhood called Valley of Colors with a very blocky 70s rainbow. Skylights and orange shingles and slanted walls like my grandparents' house, a high on a hill with a balcony, like I've always wanted, even a bar, though I've stopped drinking. Mushroom patterns inside simple cabinet designs, wooden floors that set me dancing. I'm definitely at home here. But I wonder about who made this place home before me. Some had died and some had moved. I suppose that we all do. I live with the knowledge that for me, all this will likely be temporary too. For death will come or tragedy will strike. And control, well, control I lack over anything but poetry, and that is temporary too. I'm very impressed by the art scene in this area, both in Vallejo and Venetia. And as a young person, I kind of compare it to all the art scenes in the past, like New York and San Francisco. So this is a poem that came out of that comparison. It's called Parallels. We're all drunk on stories. A romanticized past, passed down from legend to novice. Cosmic conversations of conscious comrades creating converts. Remembering, recreating, reconstituting, the ingredients of magic histories of some past beatnik bohemia that we wish we lived, blurring these with the memories of the heights that we reached, creating new mythologies blended with our dreams, searching 
for enlightenment, and we are left awestruck upon arrival. This poem is about Hans Park. I'm resting here, underneath the willows weeping, gazing across the rippling stream, breathing in the morning chill, as the sun fractures through fall leaves, with a different rainbow on every road, red, orange, green, and brown. Out here, bird song is the only sound. Someone was shot here last year, but nothing keeps me out, not even fear. The beauty of these melodies in my ears, and they just lift, lift my feet up out of here. I'm out here dreaming, and I should be walking instead. I'm reciting in my mind and performing in my head. A certain way of talking got stuck in me like blue, with each word it betrays me saying, you ain't from here, are you? As the days are growing colder, I feel it, I'm growing older. I dread sincere the days when I cannot hike. The pain that runs through me moves quicker than I. just their lighting like a movie camera. I suppose that's what it's all about. As you're, as you're, as you're, as you're walking through the darkness of shady spaces, changing your perspective to bright, you've got to remember to let in the light, and love will let you know it's all right. I got started because of an open mic in my synagogue. I'd like to tell you about them. This one's called My Shul. My Shul pursues peace. In fact, that's its name. My Shul is my heart expressed in a building of community. My Shul gives you space to grow. My Shul greets you with a hug. My Shul delivers more than hollow. My Shul has a pizza in its ceiling. My Shul has a couch for the weary. My shul makes my soul sing. My shul marches in protests. My shul mar lights bonfires of understanding. My shul's mikvah is the ocean. My shul does yoga and meditation and rocks out to 60s music. It attracts the artists. It encourages dancing. My shul gathers in living rooms and hikes the mountains. It sings in holy circles on the beach. My shul is so amazing because it let me be me. I am about to be 35. I was not alive in the 60s, but it's my favorite time period. And last year, the Marin County Fair had this theme of the 60s. So I decided to try to write as if I lived back then, and I won first place. <laughs> We were more than just hippies, artfully clad in paisley and beads, dancing in circles, hugging trees. For in these short years, we brought about revolutions peacefully. We made pilgrimage to North Beach and Greenwich Village and settled in the hate, making music about this world's fate. Joining hands, united by songs, we dreamed of a time where we all got along, an evolution of humanity where each and every soul could live free. As we lazed upon the grasses, we took every journey of the mind, sought out all the truth we could find, rediscovering ancient spirituality while forging the way for a brand new reality. We explored traditions beyond our families, seeking out new ways to be, of loving and living communally, surrounded by nature's endless beauty. We marched together in harmony, people gathered as vast as the sea, fighting for our brothers and sisters to be free, Free from Jim Crow's tyranny, we stood up against an unjust war, questioning just what we were fighting for, linked our arms together with strangers, united for justice and peace, as a generation came together to change this great nation forever, inching closer towards the dream. I also wrote a poem about the county fair, and that also got first place. 
called Liftoff. Mothers, fathers, daughters, and sons romping around in the sweet summer sun, gazing at paintings and sculptures that warm, and creating memories for years to come. Faces erupting in huge, silly grins, wrapped in the awe of experience, exploring centuries-old traditions, and trying fascinating new inventions, preserving the artistry of yesterday, quilting and canning are here to stay, decked out in ribbons of red and blue, farm animals happily call out to you. Couples walk the fairgrounds hand in hand, enjoying the notes flowing from the bandstand. Fried food fragrance fills the air, informing your nose that it's at the fair. Glowing rides illuminate the midway as families unite in fun for a day. Fireworks ignite a summertime sky as the Ferris wheel turns oh so high. Kids try their luck at games of chance. Winning tour prizes sparks a joyful dance. Folks cheer loudly as the animals race. There's something so magic about this place. Yes, it's that amazing time of year again, when you can let the fun shine in. Why are you just standing there, son? Come on, lift off. The fair has begun. of peace. After the world slowly broke my heart into tiny chips of dry paint, and handed me a brush and called me a masterpiece, and I was wise enough to believe you. <laughs> <laughs> 